hello guys and welcome back to dark horse fm and in today's video well we're going to be looking at set pieces and we're going to be focusing on corner routines in particular and um, currently i'm using nothing ham forest actually we create this set piece routine i'm going to show you and for now we're going to be focusing on corners to see how corner routines have been so effective in football manager 2022 and i noticed that while playing this game for the time being which i've played this game i've noticed that you can besides scoring for the near post corner or placing your best defender on the near post to get the advantage of your near post corners you can actually have players in other strategic positions and actually take advantage of that and score more goals from other regions of, um from other um targeting areas during your corner routine so i noticed in this game that not only the near post corner but far post corners have seemed to work for me and also playing the ball to the end of the box has also seemed to work but in this video i'm going to share with you how it's possible to actually create one routine that can take advantage of all these other all these other areas of the pitch when you're actually taking your corner so this one routine we'll be creating would actually take advantage of the near post the far post and the edge of the box regions of the pitch when you're taking your corner so in this video by the way if you're new to the channel remember to hit the subscribe button to get notifications when new videos come up and also to hit the like button if you find this video quite useful so i noticed that also with the edge of the box routine when corners are when the when you have a loose ball from the corner where you take the corner directly into the six yard box and then it's cleared by a central defender from the opposition team you should actually have a player at the edge of the box to actually mop up those those loose balls and try and send the cross back in or to take a long shot if it's a good long shot taker then you have an advantage you can actually take a long shot and score more goals from that region so the point of this video is actually creates one tech one corner set piece routine that can take care of all these areas both the near post far post and the edge of the box routine and if there are any others we can actually take advantage of that as well so the first thing we're going to cover is to look at the set of players that we have in the squad so as you can see i'm in nottingham forest right now and this is the 5th of july 2021 so it's the first save i haven't actually signed any players yet this tactic that you see is something that my assistant manager cooked up by himself i probably will not use a three on the back tactic at some point but regardless we're going to look at the players in the squad first so that's, that's always the first point of call to go to look and to see where your where your best players are who are the corner takers and who are the good headers on the team so when you come to your squad view in the left hand panel here you can click squads when you come to your squad view you can then switch from the filter to look at the players attributes so you can see attributes and then we can see technique i think it's really a technique routine so you can look at the technique so in the technical in the technical attributes we filter the corner takers and then we can see that we don't have a lot of great corner takers but we have just one jack of which is 13 and then james garner as well he has 12 for corner takers so it should work out and then crossing as well which also means that these players might actually be good as short corner routines actually get past the ball to them and then get across into the box from that wing so corner short corner routine is also an option when we're trying to create this but for now we have two corner takers that we can look to jack of and james garner once the first player has been taken care of as a corner taker we're going to look at the person that's going to be heading the ball so the headers we can just filter headers and then we can see that wow wow that's a lot of 15s so in one term for us we have like one two three four players and then if you're counting 14 30 which is still very very useful you can see the players that are actually good at heading the ball so scott mckenna tobias figuero and Nuno da Costa, I don't think Nuno da Costa is in the team. But those are the key players. You can see that their heading is all the way up at 15. So those are your main players you're going to be looking to set in your corner routine. So Scott McKenna is a six foot two central defender. So he's the person I'm going to be paying close attention to. He's a player against one in good positions like the near post or the far post when you're trying to cross the ball into the box. You can see for the next filter in the technique. So apparently something um, I learned as I'm going through this video, technical Technical attributes are very, very important for set pieces. So if you go to your long shot takers now, you can see that Cafu is the best long shot taker in the team. He's a box to box foot trader. So he's the player that I'm likely going to want to be at the edge of the box to try and mop up those balls. Looking at Cafu's passing, his passing is 12 and then vision is 13. For, for a lower league player, that's probably good as well. So vision, he has 13 and then long shots, he has long shot about 14. So he is going to be the one at the edge of the box. So it's good to keep an eye on him anyway. So in the technical in the technical attributes we filter the corner takers and then we can see that we don't have a lot of great corner takers but we have just one jack of which is 13 and then james garner as well he has 12 for corner takers so it should work out and then crossing as well which also means that these players might actually be good as short corner routines actually get past the ball to them and then get across into the box from that wing so corner short corner routine is also an option when we're trying to create this but for now we have two corner takers that we can look to jack cavalli and james garner so now that we have an idea of who our corner takers are and also who are our target areas our target players when we're trying to create the corner we can actually throw these players into the 
into their set piece routines. So you can see that in already we already have Jal Cavalio, James Garner, and Brian Ojeda. Brian um, Brian and Ojeda. We also we already have these players in their key positions. So we can also drag them to play left and right corners as well. So that's with the corner side all set up. We can then go into the team's corner routine and then since we're focusing on the attack, this is how we're going to set this up. So this is what I normally do before I start creating the corner. Obviously it's going to be it's going to sound really strange for me to try and drag this now. Okay, I can't actually drag anybody. Let me see if I can actually drag my players. Like do like a quick select. Okay, I can't do it. But regardless, what I normally do is to throw throw out everybody that is in front right now. I know that's crazy, but I'm going to drag everybody away from the goal. We want everybody back. That's the first thing I normally do. This is to take as many players away from the goal as possible to try and have an idea who is doing what and who is doing what. And for some reason, I can't take as many players as I want out. But in defense, I probably can do that. So first of all, we're going to notice that our center half, I think I should throw, I should do a quick picture that I actually know who is who. So I took a quick look at the tactic again and then I did a quick pick. So I just asked my assistant to throw in as many random players as possible in random positions as to where the tactic is and how those players are going to fit in. But this is important for the tactic because what I normally do is to create a set piece routine to actually tailor to the players that are on the field at a particular time. So what I noticed in this game is if you can have a perfect set piece routine, but if you have your players in the wrong position during that set piece routine, the set piece routine might not work. So what I noticed is that I actually have to actually set the players in the right positions and then with that you can actually know how your setup is going to play out and then which players are going to be in which position so once i have my all my central defenders and midfielders and attackers in the right positions i know who is who and i can place which players wherever i want them to be now like mbe so is a six foot two player with good jumping reach strength as well so he's good in the air but he has some strength and then heading as well so he's one player that you ideally want to have in the near post or the far post so i can have him on the far post and then the second central defender is six foot four so jumping reach 16, strength 15, heading 15. Wow, he's a beast in the air. So you can have this, our wonderful beast in the air. We can have Joe Warrell to play as the near post center half. So once we have Joe Warrell as the near post center half, remember I couldn't drag everybody back as I wanted to, but regardless, we're going to see how it works out. So the third center half obviously is Tobias Figueroa. Tobias Figueroa has near post routine six foot, He's six foot two in height and then acceleration as well. Okay, that's actually the attributes for a player that is defending. So I'm going to bring Figueroa back into the attacking position so he can actually be inside the box when we're trying to cross the corner. And then you can see his heading reaching is also his heading and jumping reach and strength is also very good. So he can play get forward. Now for the other key players. Now we have one player on the near post, one player on the far post, one player standing in the centre or in one player in the box to try and head the ball or if the ball doesn't go to the near post or the far post, if the, if the ball is just going into the middle. We also have one player that's actually received the ball. Now ideally for the players that I want behind, I'm going to have my two wing backs. These are the, ideally the players that I want behind. But I notice also in this game sometimes that the wing backs can be players that are like six foot two, so which is strange. But I noticed that in Nottingham Forest I have a wing back that is five foot nine. So I'm not going to need him in attack. I'm also have us also. In fact, my two wing backs are five foot nine. So we can drag these two players to stay back while attacking. And then okay, I need to take my I need to take my midfielder out now. Thank you. And then left the second wing back. Why is he not going? Okay, we're going to move one more player. And there we go. Wing back on the right hand side. This is crazy. It's not it's not happening. Why isn't this working? Thank you. Two players back. I finally got it, guys. So now we have one central defender on the far post, one on the near post, and then one central defender in the middle in the box to try and head those balls. So these are these are the players that we're going to be looking to head the ball if we play it into the box. And then we have two wing backs on the left and on the we have our two wing backs, both left and right, playing to stay back when the opposition is when we're actually playing the corner. So the players that are left are going to be the loose players and the players are going to lock outside the area of the box so we have one central midfielder he is five foot four he's staying back while attacking so those attributes are not actually showing and then also we've covered our corner taker as well so he's not also going to be in the mix so it's good how he is as he's staying back on as he's staying back if needed so have one player lock around the um, to be on the edge now we can have a player looking on the near post um, looking around the area so you can have a player looking around the area he has to have good finishing and good long shots now i remember that i have a player that has good long shots in this team so i have to actually find out which where that player is you can see jogan i think it's jogan 
So our long shot take as that's Kafu. Kafu is not the team currently, so I'm going to have to have another central midfielder to be in Stanley. But if Kafu was the player on the field, he's going to be the one to attack the ball, or he's going to be the one to lock outside the area. So Jogana is the closest guy that has like long shot 11. I think Kafu has 14. But Jogana is going to be the player to lock outside, to lock outside the box like this and just wait for the ball. So if Kafu was one of the team, this player will not be MCL. If Kafu is the center half, he's going to probably be the one here. So the idea about creating this system is that to make sure you have your right players in the right role. So if Kafu was the player in the team, he's going to be the one in this position. And since he's not the one in the team, I'm going to pick the closest guy that can actually score from the long range efforts, and that's Jogana. The striker, on the other hand, he's five foot nine, so I don't actually want him to cause much trouble in the air. He's also another player you want to have at the far post, locking out on the far post because you know he's not going to be the one heading the ball, he's not going to be the one competing, he's just going to hover around this region to try and cause havoc with the central defenders that are standing in that region. You can also have Philip Zinganago because he's my striker right now that I'm holding. You can also have Philip Zinganago to try and challenge the keeper since he's not tall enough. He can also really disrupt the goalkeeper from coming to get the ball but ideally I also want him to be in this region to try and Look around at the post. If there's any ball that drops off, you can just nick it into the post. Now we are left with these three guys. I don't count the edge of the box player because ideally I don't want this guy to actually. I don't want to actually use a player to play on the edge of the box. I'm going to need a few more players into the box to try and just. I just want the one guy at the edge of the box to try and mop up those balls. So we have a another central defense, another central midfielder here. I can see that he is six foot three. And he has good jump. He's six foot three, so I'm going to have to check his jumping reach now. So being six foot three, I've brought him into the box, and we can now see that he has jumping reach, 14 strength, and heading as well. So ideally, I want him to be in the box as well. So that's two players into the box, and then we're left with two players that are also looking outside the area. So this is the way this the set piece has been set up, and then we can see that our central midfielder is the one that is actually taking the corner. He is now just staying back in, staying back if needed. So that way, he's not clashing with a row. He's not. He's not playing a role where it says stay far post and then he's also the one taking the corner that's like huge confusion so now that we have everybody set up i don't need to ask my player to play to the near post or short or far post i can just leave it on mixed and then during the game i can see where the opposition isn't actually defending and if they're not defending the far post if they're not defending the near post let's say in the match they are noticed that their far post is free i can just switch this corner takers instruction from mix to defend to play the cross to the far post and then there's a free player there and then we can take advantage of that or most of the time you can just leave it mixed and then allow the player's intelligence to take that decision by himself and actually take a corner to the person that is free so guys basically that's how you set up your set piece routine to try and take advantage of all areas of the field now you have one player on the near post one player looking around the far post you have one player at the far post and you have two tall players in the middle of the box to also try and head those balls in case the corner taker decides to kick it into the middle of the box that's a simple way to try and take advantage of not just lock, um, to try and take advantage of all the corner set piece targets so that way you don't have to lock your corner set piece to just one player at far post you can do that this ideally works in game you can do this in the middle of the match and then when you notice that there's a space free you can set it to the near post or to the far post if you notice that there's a region in the game that your opposition isn't actually defending if they're not defending the near post you can change it to the near post but ideally you can leave this as mixed as well and then the defenders the corner takers decision making can actually choose where to hit the ball to but in this setup you have all your players in the right areas to try and receive the ball so guys don't forget to, to leave a like on this video if you found this actually useful so you can try it for, for yourself and let me know how it works out for you how to set up how that set piece setup works out for you Remember to leave a like on the video if you found this actually useful and also remember to subscribe to the channel because I normally make videos like this once in a while so you can get notifications when new videos pop up and then also let me know what set piece routine you've been using and what set piece routine you found quite useful in Football Manager 2022. I would like to check it out for myself and also see how it can work out for me and improve my set piece routines as well. Thanks for watching the video guys and I'll catch you guys in the next video.